Yeah, yeah one of them was born big. Yeah. His mama's big. His mama's in the front. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one right there. The one that's right here? Yeah, he's thick. Yeah, yeah, he's thick. His mama's a big mama. Golly. Oh, here, oh, these girls look good. good. The big guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're about to. They're getting, they're getting pretty floppy. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. So Cole Fagan and Ethan are out here with us and we wanted to invite them out here because it's a special day today. We want them to be a part of something that we love doing. And uh, like there's been a lot of preparation and work that goes into this. I told you guys to go back and watch the video from October. Well, if you went back and you reviewed what happened in October that was different than what we normally do, um, what you see is a burn. Uh, we did a 70 acre burn. And with that burn, we partnered up with some local organizations. Um, one, the Oaks and Prairies Venture out of uh, Ada, Oklahoma. And then we joined up with the NRCS, which is the Natural Resource Conservation Service located here, which is a state organization, part of the USDA. And I wanted to bring those guys back because they helped develop the burn plan and they actually prescribed the burn and organized it all for us back in October of 2022. Cole Meager from Meager Media, our good friend, also was here helping me film all that so we could show it to you guys. So since October, this pasture has a lot of recovery time. It's had a lot of moisture and it is beautiful. And so they're out walking around right now, identifying lots of plants that have bloomed up from all the great conditions that we've had, which all lines up perfectly. Um, because now it's time to rotate some bison in here. For the first time ever, we're finally growing. And uh, this is it right here. This is the big part of it is we're moving bison on places where they once roamed and conquered this, this land. And um, that was all stripped away from them. And now we're slowly bringing that back. And so this is a big deal to us. It's exciting. And so that's why we brought some of our good friends part of these organizations that help build this portion of land from their from their expertise and their experience and knowledge of this burn unit and now we're going to turn it into some bison ground hope you guys are ready for it Fixing the pot. I wonder if there's any blooming yet. There's definitely some around that are blooming already. That one's pretty close. Hey guys, we got Ethan McJames over here with NRCS again, coming out to check out this burn pasture over here with Cole Fagan, and they're gonna talk us through some of the grasses that have returned after the burn and kind of give us a little idea of how well the environment and the ecosystem has, has recovered since. Yeah. yeah, so we're looking for diversity in these native stands, unlike a solid Bermuda pasture. And when we're looking for diversity, we tend to lump them into three big categories, grasses, broadleafs, and legumes. And so like the Chickasaw Nation celebrates their three sisters, they call it, and it's maize, uh, which is corn or a grass, um, 
beans, which is the legume, and then the broadleaf is squash. So that's their three sisters in their traditional uh, Native American culture. Uh, it also dates back to the Lacandon Indians. They knew they could grow those three things together. Atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, so if we have legumes in association with a rhizobium bacteria here, we can fix atmospheric nitrogen and basically fertilize our pastures naturally. So we have all kinds of diversity out here. We have broadleafs, legumes, and grasses out here. And Cole's been identifying those as we go. We've seen a lot of the ones that are common here in the county. Yep, we've got just a ton of flowering plants out here and of every genus and family, and so that's that is crazy beneficial to the pollinators and there's so many different types of insects and that's going to bring in so many things that eat the insects, birds, uh, animals that like to eat them. The, the diversity out here is really, really just exploding. And so right now we've got a ton of forbs blooming and that's pretty typical of, you know, this springtime. And then as the summer goes on, the grasses will definitely come up and start to start to take over a little bit more. But I just can't believe the amount of diversity out here. It's, it is it is amazing. That's that's a pretty good testament to the fall burning. Yeah. It really is. And we got that rain right after the first burn in October and, you know, greened it up pretty good. And, but I, I, I'm i sold on the fall burning for this forb diversity. Yep. And when we talk this about awesome. pollinators, bees and butterflies and things, we have the yellow clock clovers blooming right now. We have the indigo, the wild indigo, which is the host plant to our frosted elfin butterfly, which is... Uh, a listed species. We have a, just a variety of uh, forbs out here right now that are blooming. So we have some vetch, which is a legume. We have the yellow hop clover, which is in here. Uh, we saw some white clover earlier. This is it right here. Uh, so all three of those are really common around here and do really well on their own. So and so many people would see these. This is mare's tail here, and so many people would see that and think, "Oh, I need to spray that. That's a weed. We don't want that." But these things have deep tap roots and what what these things do is when they die off later in the summertime that tap root shrinks up and you've got a straight hole going down into the soil and let water infiltrate deeper than it would if it wasn't there and so people that are spraying this stuff thinking that these are weeds I mean, they're just shooting themselves in the foot most of the time. I mean, gosh. And we're feeding the soil biology so there's a whole host of organisms below the soil that are part of that nitrogen fixing process and part of the process that ultimately determines how things grow above ground. And we need to feed that soil biology. And so we do it by feeding it a diversity of things underground, including the roots of these mare's tails and some of these other plants that we normally wouldn't consider to be premium grazing plants, but they're good for our grazers below ground. They still have value for sure. Yep. Yeah. And definitely kind of a misconception probably from people that don't live the ranching lifestyle or mm -hmm. see the fire as something destructive and see it as something that just tears down and they're asking what's the benefit of it and why are we doing that clearly here you can see yeah. how much better it is because what was this taken over with before a bunch of blackberry a bunch of invasive grasses and stuff and you know we we basically we burned off all the all the grass and the thatch and so you let sunlight hit the ground warm it up expose seeds that haven't seen sunlight in a long time and that's why all this diversity has come back up after the burn and a grass hay might be, you know, grasses may be 7 to upwards of 15% protein, but what's the most expensive hay? It's alfalfa hay. Well, that's a legume. We have legumes out here that are upwards of 28% protein. So if you had to choose grasses versus legumes, you know, of course you want a mixture of everything, but these legumes are super high in protein. And after the burn, the blackberry regrowth and all those other plants are very palatable if you graze them right after it's uh, regrown from a burn and uh, they're very high in protein compared to just grass, like a solid Bermuda pasture, for example, has less overall protein than this salad bar that we have here of a variety salad of plants. Bar. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it is. I see some prairie parsley over here, that's a cool plant. Hot clover. And I love how some of these onions turn pink and some of them that's, are bright white. That is beautiful. Yeah, we have vetch white clover and yellow hop clover here. All three really good legumes for the area. So all nitrogen fixers. So we're good on legumes. I mean, they're everywhere. So that's yellow hop clover right there. Uh, these ones right here with the little white stripe in the middle, it's white clover. Yeah, it's back in there. And then so. this stuff with the, see it's already made seed pods. This is vetch. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. It's a bean. See, yep, just like bean. the three yep, sisters. It's like a soybean or edamame, you know? It's, yeah. It's all the same. Excellent. That's beautiful. Little tendrils on there. And that's how the Lacandone Indians did it. They had the beans growing up the corn in association with the squash. And dose makes poison. I mean, if you ate too much of that, it would, it would be toxic, but in a mixture. 
So what is that? Wild onion. Wild. And that's where we, when you get There's into that. There's a couple of different species of it. But you get into that managed intensive grazing, you can just force them on it. Yep. Oh, here's some. We got ragweed right here, Cole. Talk about ragweed and quail. Oh, yeah. Right here. I mean, number one seed producing perennial plant for quail. Yep, everyone loves to hate on ragweed. They think, oh, the ragweed's choking out this and choking out that. And it's a huge deer food. Deer eat the snot out of it, too, but it makes a really good seed that quail love to eat. Is that a little tiny bee on there, too? There's a variety of bees out here, too. I mean, there's probably. Yeah, get there are get several this. species of bees out here. There's right a little now. beetle on here. That'd be cool to get. I've Beetles never seen are one pollinators. That can... You know, beetles can actually smell. Really? Yes. That is beautiful. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. What is this, uh, this one called again? Western Yarrow. And if, if you look right behind you, there's some ones that look more typical. They're they're always white most of the time. Gotcha. I've seen them a little bit pink like this, but I've never seen one that pink. Uh, primrose. Evening Primrose. That's the yellow one? Mm -hmm. And the white one's Kenneth Primrose? Or uh, This is a wine cup. Okay. Or, uh, a mallow, poppy mallow. Okay. Light, I think it's light poppy mallow is what it is. This is in the Onagraceae family and they always have four petals and then the mallows always have five. Yeah, what else do we have? Red one, yeah. wine cup, yeah. Oh. These things are beautiful. Yeah. They're really cool. Birds love it. Yeah. I'm excited to see what our bird data says. They're coming here in like a month. Yep. Got it. There's just insects everywhere. I mean, look. Yeah, just wave your foot Some of them are tiny bees and some of them are beetles. And there's a yarrow plant over here with like two or three different kinds of beetles on it. I think I think yarrow actually does do that. This is prairie parsley. Around it's covered. And so, you know, if there was a lot of bare ground around it, we'd see more than just a few thistle plants here and there. Out of all the Badges of honor, I think that dead cedar trees. It still gets you. I think it's great. How about the barn still standing? And the barn still standing. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's no good. one was the, hurt. That's the barn is still standing. <laughs> it got hot in there. Yeah. It's a little toasty and smoky. Well, you guys are over here on the. You know, you guys were doing yeah. the right thing. We were over there. Yeah. Putting ourselves in predicaments. Um, can we go over to the other yeah. spot and see all the dead cedars? Just oh yeah, the dead yeah, cedars, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Can you actually eat it? Oh yeah. When it's... I'm not gonna eat it right now. But... Make sure. Get a little grit in here. Huh? Oh yeah, sure. It's just hadn't flowered yet. Oh man. It's strong. Just look at the tall these different mm -hmm. kinds of onions are. So that other onion we we're looking at is a different species, but they're all the same family. Yeah, look how this how there's a, like a perfect semicircle of <laughs> of I guess that's Chrome or they did it over there too. Those are fairy rings. That's a fairy ring right there. A what? Ring. So I believe that's from a fungus under the ground or some type of microbial activity. You see these all over the United States. Yeah, there's another one over there. Wow. Yeah. Huh. A mycelium wants to live its life as like a spider web underneath the soil. Only when it's disturbed does it shoot up a mushroom, which is a, a thing that shoots out its spores and sends its genetic material. It goes, hey, somebody's trying to kill me. I need to send out my spores and my genetic material. Otherwise, it lives its life as a spider web that also communicates. It's like right. a telephone line mm -hmm. underneath the soil. Yeah, Marissa, fungus is the biggest living organism. Yeah. Fungus is among us. <laughs> Mainly in forested areas, but also up here in grasslands or rangelands. Dicanthelium, and it's a cool season one. It's one of the only grasses that deer actually really love to eat. And these oh. seeds are oh, perfect wow. little uh, bird food. I mean, quail, meadowlarks, all that stuff that eats seeds, they love this stuff. Uh -huh. I'm gonna pass it around. Yeah. It's, see quite a bit of it. It's gonna have. And it's a cool season grass, too. Oh, yeah. This is catclaw. Catclaw acacia, yep. yep. 
And see, it's got little deals on there. Recurve claws. But deer. Some of those little birds. There's so oh, many. Oh, this is cat claw sensitive briar. Check this out, y'all. So, so it's called cat claw like sensitive briar. Touch it. Watch. Liars. It'll <laughs> see how it's closing its leaves oh, when I touch yeah. it. This is going to be purple prairie clover, I think, right? That's so, watch. Wild. If I touch it just right, it'll close its sleeves. It's called cat claw sensitive briar. This one did it a whole lot prettier, but yeah, it's if I touch it, it's closing it its leaves. Close yep. I mean, originally bison were migratory, just like birds, you know, they mm -hmm. follow and it makes that really strong smelling flower and it, oh, it, it it's like a circle mm -hmm. and it'll have a bunch of really cool flowers that come out and it's called bee balm for a reason. I mean, Look pollinators. Look at the bundle flower here, Cole. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. Come out. That's the one you're touching it. Look at all of it. Man, we are so lucky to know and have met and worked with people like Cole Fagan and Ethan McJames. Those guys are out here, and I know it's part of their job, but you know, calling them and having them come out and be a part of this, it's so awesome. You know, something from simply having them draw up a prescribed burn for us has been, uh, and just from there, and all the knowledge and experience that those guys have and have brought to our ranch is, is irreplaceable. And so we're very thankful for that relationship. and. We cannot wait to get the bison out on that land. And, uh, you know, like I've said, there's a lot of work that's gone into that, a lot of work that's gone into this burn unit. And uh, even from last October, you guys got to go back and watch the fire video if you haven't. And there's, uh, we're not just raising bison out here, guys. We're, there's a whole lot going on in the background. I mean, you hear these native birds out here. You see the wild indigo. There's a reason why the wild indigo's here. There's a reason why um, the birds are here. There's a holistic approach to this thing. We're not, like I said, we're not just raising bison. There's a bigger picture in what's going on in that, in, uh, with, with raising bison. And basically, we're just doing what they used to do back in the day with, with, no, with no humans around. Um, and them managing the landscape naturally in a natural setting. And, and that's what we're, we're doing. And we're using fire. We're paying attention and noticing things and seeing uh, what Mother Earth provides basically by using uh, fire and, and other different tools. But just the knowledge that can come, can bring this all together is awesome. So I appreciate those guys. And Marissa and I are so excited for what's going on on all these pastures. With that being said, we still got some uh, fence repair to, uh, you know, work on a part of this burn unit before we let them out. Uh, I think there's a few spots I need to cover that worry me a little bit. We got creek crossings now that uh, could be so potential areas they could get out basically. Um, so we've got to um, face those and get those taken care of. The worst thing ever if they got out, you know, roaming around Murray County. That's my worst fear. That's the last thing we want to happen. Uh, is that it is for them to get out, but we are very excited anticipating to let them out on this burn unit. Um, and it's just exploded with plants, and you heard that from Ethan and Cole. And, um, you know, simple plants like this, wild indigo, that capture nitrogen and put it down into the soil, it's all over our pastures, and it's and it's a beautiful plant. You know, a lot of people would spray this and get rid of it. And uh, that's by their opinion and whatever. Um, and then you've got plants like right here, the blackberries, the wild blackberries, the, an invasive plant that takes up a lot of uh, grazing ground. So um, there's a lot of things, you know, we're trying to treat that and, and, and manage that to get rid of it, just like the cedar trees. But uh, plants like this, you know, are bringing, doing a lot of great things for our pastures, which is for our bison. So, uh, and then you add on to that, then you're, you're encouraging birds because all the insect life that these plants bring. And it's a complete cycle that goes on out here. And we may not actually see it, but you got people like Cole, Fagan, and Ethan that kind of say, oh, look what's going on here. And you're like, oh, so we're completely learning everything and we're going to let them out. That's the next thing. We're gonna let them out and uh, hopefully everything goes well 
And then there's still some monumental things going on, guys. I can't wait to bring it to you. Marissa and I are excited. And uh, it's just going to change. It's going to change a lot. And uh, it's going to be different. Um, so here at the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch, a.k.a. Ponderosa. We are kind of in a predicament. I'm, I'm really trying to get these bison out here as soon as we can uh, because these spring grasses only last for so long. Now, this they're not going to eat this wild indigo right here. But the spring grasses are only around for so long because as soon as those temperatures go up and summer hits, those spring grasses will go back into dormancy or a lot of them will die. You got your legumes, your forbs, and a lot of those plants that are here in the spring, like Cole and Ethan said, they're going to go away. And then the native grasses, your blue stem, your native, your Indian grass, those grasses are going to rise up basically and that's when the grazing really takes off so being a part of this they're going to basically come through and graze a lot of these spring grasses down before that summer hits so we're really anticipating and trying to get some fence work done so we can get those animals out there so we're we're trying to hustle and get them on that burn unit while we do have the spring grasses so they can get their bellies full knock down a lot of those spring grasses that are going to disappear very soon and summer's just knocking on the door uh, right now because we can feel it from these 80 and 90 degree temperatures and the humidity and then uh, all the native grasses will be coming through we'll pull them off of the burn unit let all that come back up and then we'll be able to come back in and graze it some so um still a lot of work to do got our work cut out for us and a lot of learning so thank those guys for all their help thank cole meager for filming and and asking questions and and helping marissa and i he's been a uh, major uh, part of here a lot of the stuff we've done here lately and he was on that burn back in last October helping me film and stuff so I want to thank my good buddy Cole Meager at Meager Media thank you guys for watching us we'll see you guys soon we're gonna keep on bison ranching <laughs>